Hello, I'm Meredith Ritchie, and this is a collaborative presentation with Brittany Griffith, and we are amping up student reflection with Pear Deck and Nearpod. Today we'll be exploring student reflection tools using the Nearpod and Pear Deck Google add-ons. They are add-ons that can be easily used to survey student participation and encourage reflection. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started with student reflection. This infographic highlights some of the benefits for the Pear Deck and Nearpod Google add-ons. The HCS district utilizes Google Slides a lot, so this is the focus of the video. However, you can build Nearpod lessons to the Nearpod site if you prefer. If you need help downloading the Nearpod or Pear Deck Google add-ons, be sure to start with the Dear Dis video Google Slide add-on for detailed steps. These two boxes describe some of the features of each Pear Deck and Nearpod. There are definitely some similarities, so ultimately you're probably going to get more comfortable with one but both of them have advantages as well. When it comes to levels of reflection, there are four ways you can embed student reflection throughout a lesson. Many people only consider before learning and after learning, but there can be some real benefits to reflecting during the learning while you are within the assignment and going forward, seeing how it's gonna help you in the future. We included and mention student ownership because we think reflection really helps students see how they are growing themselves academically and for some lessons emotionally and mentally. We're going to be showing examples of ways to plug in reflection in a relatively easy way. I would like to note reflection can be an activity that takes just a couple minutes or a multi-step process, but I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. If you don't utilize student reflection regularly, perhaps set a goal to include some quick student reflection in the first few early lessons and see how this can build a stronger relationship with your students and hopefully help them reflect on their own growth. Now we'll jump into the actual Google Slides. An example of adding student reflection before learning is that you could use a poll question from Nearpod, Google add-on, with a question similar to, let me open up our Nearpod add-on first, and I'll show you what this looks like. You could ask a question similar to this one. Which part of the DBQ process, which is document-based questioning, are you most worried about? Reading the documents, making connections between the documents, or writing out my answers. Grammar is hard. So this is an example of a poll that you could simply add using the Nearpod add-on. When you look at the answers, you as the teacher can look at them and simply tell the students the kind of percentage of what students are worried about. You could show it up and have a larger group discussion about it. That's perfectly fine. One thing that's great about the poll slides is that you can show students how others are struggling in the same way. Then you could follow it up with an open-ended question. For example, in this one, write a personal goal for this DBQ. It should relate to the answer you just gave and should be specific. For example, your goal might be, I will spend 20 minutes of homework time just reading and taking notes on the documents so I can better understand what they mean. The open-ended questions go directly to the teacher. No other students need to see them. So asking a more personal question, one that they may not want shared out by others because it shows what they're struggling with. Um, the open-ended question is a great option for that reason. You can share it out. If you find one that's just spectacular, you can send those answers to other students, to all the other student devices, but that's just up to you and the relationship you have with your students. So you could do an open-ended question to kind of get them probing and thinking and planning and reflecting on their own strengths or weaknesses when going into the assignment. To add student reflection during the learning, you could use a collaboration board. 
This would be a collaboration board using the Nearpod add-on. And you can do a personal goals check-in. So the personal goals is related to how they've reflected on their own strengths so far. You can add a column for each type of personal goal that you made, reading the documents, making connections, or writing the answers. In that column, they could share a tip that has helped them or a struggle that they have faced. They do have the option of interacting on the collaboration board if you, the teacher, allow it. So if there is anyone who is struggling, you could suggest that they give helpful suggestions for how to help that student. So that's a collaboration board. You do have a lot of control over those. You can approve the posts or not. So don't be worried about just getting it, giving them a kind of a free for all with a collaboration board. You do have some control with it. So all three of those were in the Nearpod add-on. On the right hand side, you can see what we use as just examples is a poll, an open-ended question, and a collaboration board. There are a lot of other different options of slides, but those are three that we think really pair well with student reflection. Moving on to Pear Deck. And moving on in the learning process, we're going to be looking at how students can reflect after learning. Again, a lot of these slides you can kind of fit in different sections, but this was just a way to give an example of each type of learning with the different slides. Pear Deck has template library. So after they have finished the lesson, when you want to encourage reflection, you could easily throw in a slide similar to this one in one minute, write about the most difficult part of today's lesson and what you've learned. If you've done it as a multi-day process, it might be the most difficult part of the entire assignment or the specific part of the assignment, however that may look. And they write their own responses for you to be able to view as the teacher. They also have templates like reflecting on today's activity. This is a very simple one that you could throw into basically any assignment at the end of any day as an exit slip. Again, just to have them thinking about what they're learning and how they're learning. So what did you like, what you didn't like, what was easy and what was hard? Again, these are great jumping off points for you as the teacher to follow up. If you see that they wrote that grammar was the most difficult part, you can kind of follow up on your own and maybe do some small group instruction, but basing it on their own reflections of their own learning, trying to empower them to think about how they are learning. I also wanted to show in the Pear Deck add-on, you could also simply create a slide, for example, based on what you learned during this DBQ. So planning forward, this is a question that would do student reflection for future assignments. Based on what you've learned, what are some techniques that worked well for you? And this will be a reminder for what you can do next time for your next DBQ, for your next project. What has worked really well and what can I kind of build upon? In this case, I made just a question in Google Slides, but a great option in Pear Deck is that you can just make it, you can click on text and it makes it an interactive question so they can write their response to you. So if you didn't want to use any of the Pear Deck templates, you can easily write your own question and make it so that students can respond. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources like this cast podcast and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Deer Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog.